what's up everybody welcome to BioS3 Raw TV today we're going to talk about the new um, testing that's going to be taking place in the NBA it says uh, the NBA the National Basket Player, Basketball Players Association announced today that blood testing for human growth hormone will commence under the league's anti-drug program effective with the 2015-2016 NBA season as a part of the collective bargaining negotiations in 2011 the NBA and the Players Association agreed to process to a process determining on how blood testing would be implemented in the NBA. Now that process is complete, and in 2015, uh, the NBA training camps, they're going to be subject to three random unannounced tests annually, two in season, one off season, and players will also be subject to reasonable cause testing for HGH. So like if someone they think possibly might be on it, they're going to test them. But three tests randomly, two during the season, one off season, or is it two, yeah, whatever. Here's the thing. And they're not talking about what the test is. And let me fix this fucking camera angle. All right, I need a little more square. What I'm assuming, and I don't know because they're not talking too much about what the actual testing is. And there was really no test for human growth hormone metabolites. It shows up in the body just like insulin. If you take insulin, you don't show insulin metabolites. You show that there's too high of insulin in your body. Your blood sugar is low. Now, what they're probably going to do is test their IGF levels. The more growth hormone you take, the more IGF levels go up. So a lot of guys, when they're buying this generic GH that's on the market, they'll take a whole vial of it, which is 10 IUs, and they'll go to the doctor, have blood drawn about, I don't know, like six hours or something like that afterwards, and they'll see where their IGF levels are after taking the, the shot. Now, there's got to be a baseline to begin with, so obviously you get blood work done first when you're not on any of it, see where your baseline is. And if that IGF level bumps up quite a bit, you get yourself some real growth hormone. Now here's the problem with testing that way, and I'm not sure this is exactly what they're going to do. They might have they might have actually come up with some kind of fucking test by now. But as long as the athlete stayed on the same dosage, and it was a reasonable dosage, let's say one IU a day, two IUs a day, they would have a stable IGF level throughout every single day. So it wouldn't matter what day, what time of the year that they popped them, they are popped the, the tests on them, they're gonna test essentially negative. Now, if they're taking like 10 IU vials at a time, their IGF levels are gonna be extremely high to the point where nobody's body is producing that much IGF and that's gonna be cause for a positive test. So you see there's good and bad. Like they're gonna waste a lot of money trying to catch guys and I mean, Let's say there is someone that's suspected. Maybe they're taking something else. They test them for growth hormone, they're taking something else. There's all kinds of designer shit that goes on that athletes get that, you know, may increase size, recovery ability. I mean, you know, muscularity. I mean, all this stuff. It may not be growth hormone. So they pop them with a growth hormone test and he tests negative. They're like, oh, he's clean. We could be on something else. Now, the guys who are, you know, really smart with this, and these guys, they're multi million dollar fucking athletes, okay? They have access to amazing doctors. They have access to anything that they want and need. Taking the same dose on a daily basis, because the stuff has to be taken every day. It's pretty much out of your system within 24 hours or the effects of it are. So you're gonna see a decline after 24 hours of the last shot. So these guys, as long as they're taking like, that's, and they're regimented, they gotta get up and they gotta train. They gotta eat a certain way. When they go into camp, it's all about basketball. Now, here's the kicker. If in the off season they decide, well, I'm not gonna take this stuff in the off season. I don't really need it. I'm not traveling as much, I'm not playing as much, I don't need to recover as much. And they pop them with a test in the off season and their IGF levels are a lot lower than they are during the season, even though technically they could be within the, the same range, if they're fluctuating between the season and off season, that could also constitute a positive test also. So I think there's gonna be room for interpretation. There's gonna be room for lawsuits, you know, saying that someone, fucking dog here in my mouth, Someone did test positive when they shouldn't have tested positive. Someone, you know, I mean, there's going to be some problems with it. There's no doubt about it because none of this testing is for a specific metabolite, it seems. It's levels. And we've seen people in the past who had naturally high testosterone levels. And when they started training a certain way, which is, you know, some people claim that, you know, you get testosterone boost. Studies say you get boost in testosterone. Their testosterone is actually above the average range for testosterone. It's above 900. So, you know, was it 300 to 500, 300 to 600, whatever the top of the, the normal range is, they would go above that 
from training a certain way and recovering a certain way to where technically that would be considered testing positive, although they never took anything. So I think it's interesting, and in, you know, the peptides also, here's another thing. If these guys are using peptides, like, uh, like IGF-1, LR3, um, I don't know if IGF-DES puts the same kind of, um, same kind of numbers up as the LR3, but if you're taking something like that that's technically legal, you're not supposed to because it's for human consumption only, but they're taking something like that and they figure, hey, you know, it's a growth hormone test. I'm not going to get in trouble taking this because it's not growth hormone. They can get in trouble taking that because it's going to show up the same on the test. So I think that they should be smarter than that. If they're working with these doctors and there's probably people around them that know about these different peptides and growth hormones, they should know what would show up on a test, what wouldn't show up on a test, how much to take, how to take it, how to cycle it. I mean, there's ways around it, and these guys have been finding ways around everything for years. This is just something new that they're going to have to find another way around, which they will. I mean, I, I figured out one way right there. So you're trying to tell me that these guys don't have people that are like experts that know even better ways? Absolutely. So I think that, you know, I don't think it matters if they're going to test. It doesn't fucking matter one bit. They may catch some people. They may not. I think the only thing that's going to happen, honestly, it's not going to dissuade people from using it. What I think it's going to do is fuck up some people's lives. It's going to fuck up some people's lives that test positive and they're going to be looked at as cheaters when everybody else is taking the same exact fucking thing and people like look at them like they're gods. And they're going to look at this one person that had a high IGF level test that gets suspended for 20 games and go, ooh, he's a cheater. You know, there are baseball players that I respect for what they can do because I know it's not the drugs and their reputation is tarnished forever and some have been forced to retire before they're, while they're still in their prime because of the fact that they got caught even though everybody else is fucking taking the same shit. So... You know, it is what it is. We'll see how it works out. I'm going to be interested to see who tests positive, who doesn't. Because you know everybody's taking something. But it's always interesting when someone gets popped, especially a big name, gets popped. And you're like, <laughs> dude, you couldn't figure out how to not get popped? BioStraining at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. www.biostraining.com is a blog. It's the GH testing bicep. They're not going to catch anybody. And we're out.